Many of you have been meditating or attempting to meditate over the years for a long time. Some of you are having wonderful experiences. Some of you feel like you've plateaued. Some of you are wondering, what am I supposed to experience in meditation? So what I want to touch on here in this video is by no means the end of all that could be said, far from it, about meditation, levels of meditation, approaches to meditation. One of my colleagues years ago said, there are as many ways to meditate as there are to cook an egg. And I would say that there's even many more, many, many more. Some people are meditating for stress reduction or pain relief. And then at the other end of the spectrum, there are people who are meditating to transform consciousness. And not only transform their own consciousness, but meditating as an offering for the upliftment of all beings without trying to overly shape or direct that. So what's going on when it doesn't seem like anything's happening in meditation? Why aren't many meditations really seeming to change us or, or quote, work? Well, if we simplify it, I see two things. In decades of meditating and working with meditators, I see two things that most challenges with meditation come back to. Either one, we don't have techniques and tools that we understand how to use and or enough practice with them. And then two, which is subtler but very powerful, we haven't got the energy boost to go beyond the familiar zone of thinking or the familiar zone of the meditation we're in. So I'm gonna to touch on both of those a little bit here and hopefully you'll find some benefit. So tools, two of the most important concrete tools for entering meditation also happen to contribute to an easier life in just about every single activity we're involved in, whether it's cooking a meal, fixing a flat tire, building a house, making love that's actually wonderful for everybody involved, um, and going into meditation, and that's relaxation in relationship to the breath. Many meditators, people practicing meditation, either weren't given the tool or the instruction or are not spending enough time with willingly intentionally relaxing the body. Willingly intentionally relaxing the body. The traditional way that many people are taught to do the relaxation is what's called a body scan. You either start at your toes or the top of your head and work your way through the whole body and there are several ways this could happen. You breathe into places of tension and let go on the exhale, or simply soften them with your imagination. If you've been around my work for a little bit, you know the way I teach relaxation, I call the six points of softening. You soften these six places in the body as, they're, as though you're opening imaginary fists with your imagination, and then everything in between those six points also softens. The more we relax the body, the more the thinking stream slows down. So that's one of the many reasons it's so important to relax the body. It also releases the familiarity of the tension of the ego structure, the tension of being a particular person, believing we're only a particular person and stuck with the limitations of our projection of that individual person, persona. The six points of softening, what are they for those who are new? So right now, just make a fist so you can see what that feels like freshly. Even if you've done this with me a million times, make a fist, feel the tension of making a tight fist. Open it, let go, let go. You're not pushing your fingers open, you're just let go. And notice that feeling. What does it feel like to let go? Now bring that feeling with your imagination through the soles of your feet, skin, tendons and connective tissue and the muscles all the way to the bone. And keep that going and now soften the palms of your hands in the same way, continuously softening the soles of your feet and the palms of your hands. Keep that going. Soften the four corners of your eyes, the inside and outside corners of your eyes and the region inside and around your ears. Just make it up that it's easy. Don't worry about being perfect. It's the intention and the follow through. Yes, keep going. And now you're softening soles, palms, corners of the eyes, region of the ears. And next you're softening the tongue as it comes deeply to rest in the floor of your mouth, as well as all the muscles of the pelvic floor groin region. 
soles of the feet, palms of the hands, corners of the eyes, region inside and around the ears, tongue, pelvic floor groin region. Now, tool number two, the breath. So keep the softening going. Let the breath come in deeply and slowly and let it, let it go out even slower. So I said that softening the body, relaxing the body slows the thinking stream down. So does slowing the exhales. You combine them, the mind stream, the thinking stream slows down even faster. So the longer and the slower your exhales, the more the thinking stream will slow down. So experiment now. Radically slowing your exhales while softening the six points, or if you prefer a body scan over the six points doing this, radically slowing your exhales. Beautiful, yeah, it works. Now, don't wait until, keep going by the way, through the rest of this talk if you can, and I know you can, because you're gonna feel great when you stop when you stand up and do whatever's next. So keep going with the softening and the slow breathing, slow exhales. So the key is practice and not just when you're doing formal meditation. Practice when you're in line at the bank. Pla practice when you're uh, at a stop sign in the car. Practice when you're going for your walk. Practice in all sorts of circumstances. This practice, this concrete practice, as it matures and develops, is going to expand into very subtle, very transformative and powerful shifts in consciousness. Because it's the beginning preparation for dissolving the attachment to our historical sense of self. Our historical sense of self is a small fraction, the tiniest fraction of all that we really are. And tension keeps our attachment to the historical sense of the self really strong, really, really strong. So part of the gift of meditation, if you're hearing behind the words, is the dissolution of this tension-based attachment to a very fragmented and partial sense of self. Awakening is the foregrounding of wakefulness. No particular person is awake, but now and now and now and then now again, is wakefulness foregrounding in this moment, and this moment, and this moment. There are plenty of people I bump into, casually and formally, who have had very profound peak experiences of wide states of consciousness, whether that was through a retreat, a plant medicine ceremony, a spontaneous happening, which it does happen that way, and are under the delusion that they are permanently awake because they had these experiences. One of the ways you can tell is that there's an individual I telling somebody else often claiming, I am awake or I have finished off all my shadow. I doubt it. If you have, wonderful. What a blessing to all beings. But most of us, including the most advanced teachers I've interacted with, have said there's always the next stage of growth. There's always the next thing to recognize. There's always subtler layers to let go and dissolve of old attachments. So let's align with those perspectives where we're not trying to get somewhere and yet we're willingly growing all day, every day. So I said that part one of why your meditations may not be working is not having the right tools. And there are other tools, but these are the basic ones, relaxation and breath. What we're doing with our awareness is a much deeper one. That leads to the second reason why many meditation practices are not really changing you, quite frankly. That's because there's not a strong enough energy infusion or energy boost through some form of initiation or empowerment from an authentic teacher sitting in an authentic lineage. So there are a number of them all over the world and may you have the good fortune to studied long enough with one of them to receive these transmissions. No individual teacher owns the energy flow that I'm calling a transmission. It's a mind to mind, and I don't mean thinking, awareness to awareness flashing forth like a lightning flash. Something gets illuminated. It may be very subtle though. It may not feel like a lightning crash or a lightning strike, or it might. There are very, very subtle shifts that can be very profound in how they change us. We only realize after the fact, perhaps. So 
in my work, I offer these retreats, in-person retreats. I offer workshops and courses, my Empowered You community, and especially the meditation immersions. I used to call them intensives. They're called immersions now. In fact, at this recording, there's one coming up. I offer these immersions on a quarterly basis. They're half-day online retreats that you can do when they're live or at a later chosen time, your own chosen now, later. And they're meant for these energy boosts. The most probably concentrated experience of the energy boost of transmission in my work seems, not limited to, but to me seems to be the immersions and the retreats and for many in the private session work, but by far not limited to that. People report in receiving transmissions through all the courses, even courses that were recorded years ago, they still have the energy transmission alive. So let's just say a little bit more about this. So your thinking mind can never understand transmission. Your awareness can't. You can actually sense behind my words what I'm saying. You don't have to believe anything I'm saying without having directly experienced something while listening or contemplating it after the fact. So when I say an authentic teacher, an authorized teacher, that's a teacher who's been given permission to teach by a really cooked teacher in an authorized lineage, in an authentic lineage. What do I mean by authentic lineage? It's unbroken. From being to being teacher to student, there's been an empowerment for generation after generation after generation, even if we don't know the names of all the beings that go back. So all the attainment, the recognition of greater wakefulness, compassion, embodied awareness, grows and grows and grows and grows in that lineage for thousands of years and is passed through the teachings, the mantra offerings, the instructions and the silence, silent transmissions of the teacher in the lineage. Again, no particular teacher owns that energy of grace. If they say they do, they're delusional. Nobody owns it. The more a teacher has done their inner work, an authorized teacher, is doing their inner work, the more space there is for that transmission to move through more powerfully, unimpeded. Now, powerfully doesn't mean that we're going to have visions when that teacher is transmitting or that our body is going to necessarily tremble or, you know, our, we'll suddenly be free from all of our difficulties all at once. Not that that could never happen, but that's really rare. How we notice we've received transmission. We've received grace. Again and again, we receive more and more of it when we're in company with these teaching streams. One of the ways you notice is you desire to do more practice. That is one of the main hallmarks, is there's a deeper desire to practice, to spend time with grace, to spend time with people who are spending time with grace. That's one of the main hallmarks. Some other hallmarks, you become less reactive in situations where you're familiar with being reactive, lightly or strongly. There's a less of attachment to needing to be praised or fear of blame. There's an easier time with creative inspiration flowing without struggle for a project, a relationship, these are just a few of the things. So let yourself soften once again. Soles, palms, eyes, ears, tongue, pelvic floor. Let the breath come in and let it go out very slowly and sweetly. So I hope I've been helpful here with a couple of pointers about things that can help your practice of meditation become more and more alive and bear greater, greater fruit. And one of the greatest fruits of your meditation 
is when you are becoming a kinder, more compassionate being for everybody you connect with, physically and non-physically. That your very presence, your nervous system becomes a transmitter without you having to be special about it for love, for ease, for flow, for clarity. So how might you deepen or explore practice going forward from here not just for your own benefit, but more so for the benefit of all beings, especially those who may be suffering. And without thinking you're the one doing the fixing or the healing. Grace, the same transmission that makes your meditation come more and more alive, is the transmission that's moving through you for the benefit of the environment, for the benefit of all beings. So you choosing to open to transmission actually, in the big picture, is an act of compassion on your part. And it's the movement of grace. Grace is actually, the transmission is actually what's inspiring you to go take the immersion or the retreat or do the practice. And as you go further and further in your embodiment of wakefulness, you do recognize that you're not separate from grace. You never have been. And that the transmissions help to reveal and quicken the revelation process. I have permission in two lineages to teach, outward known lineages, and perhaps you feel a resonance. So if you do, I'll put a link below for the upcoming September meditation immersion. If you're watching this at a later now, later than September 2024, you just go to scotchwank.com and you'll find plenty of offerings, whether it's upcoming immersions, retreats, workshops, and events to settle in. And know that the key is not just receiving transmission. That's just the beginning part. Embodying the transmission, the practice, in all sorts of circumstances, in easy circumstances and in difficult circumstances.